Usually, when NASA conducts in-depth analyses of asteroids that appear to be on a possible collision course with Earth, the odds of collision steadily drop off the more we learn about the asteroid's trajectory. However, recently, NASA has announced that that is not the case with asteroid 2024 YR4, an asteroid that's been making the news just about every single day lately, either in regards to how its odds of hitting the Earth have increased, or how the odds are still very much in our favor and you don't have to worry about it, or how the odds have increased yet again. And this is something that hasn't happened a whole lot as of late when we're talking about near-Earth asteroids and something that needs to be taken very seriously. So what kind of odds do we have now of impact in 2032? Well, the odds of impact are not nearly as significant, in my opinion, as the fact that the only agency on the planet that is best suited to stop it, that is to say NASA, just experienced a substantial cut to its staff and will likely experience a cut to its budget as well. And the morale level at NASA is at rock bottom currently, which in my opinion is the last thing we need right now. Good afternoon, space flight and space science enthusiasts, and welcome to another episode of the Angry Bulletin. And right now, I'll tell you, I am becoming keenly aware of why I chose the title The Angry Astronaut in the first place. People often ask me, why are you so angry? Well, there were two reasons to start off with. Number one, NASA was wasting some of the limited funds that they have at their disposal on some ill-conceived contracts, most significant of which was the Boeing Starliner, but the second reason that I was so angry was the fact that NASA gets such a tiny budget in the first place. We're talking less than one half of one percent of the U.S. federal budget, a pathetically small amount of money that is used for some extremely important scientific objectives, and also some very important practical ones, such as detecting dangerous asteroids and possibly deflecting them. We would be completely unaware of the presence of 2024 YR4 if it wasn't for NASA and their vigilant efforts to try to track down the presence of every near-Earth asteroid in the solar system and what threat they may represent to human civilization in the future. Very, very important agency. An agency that, by the way, has all also funneled billions and billions of dollars into Elon Musk's SpaceX, and now Elon's Doge department has turned around and slashed their budget. But we'll get to that in just a second. Let's go ahead and talk about actual impact. On January 27th, the asteroid surpassed a 1% chance of hitting Earth, which was an important threshold as far as NASA's JPL was concerned. Currently, no other large asteroids have an impact probability above 1%, NASA said in that press release. But then on February 7th, the asteroid's chances grew again to 2.3%, and then again on February 18th, it is now at 3.1%, according to NASA's most recent analysis of its trajectory. 3.1% chance, or odds of 1 in 32, which is much better than any lottery I can think of, that this asteroid will hit the Earth on December 22nd, 2032. And if impact does occur, it will hit somewhere along this threat path. Again, thanks to a NASA employee, we have this information years ahead of time, indicating what major cities might 
be at risk. Or if the impact takes place in the ocean, somewhere close to the coastline of a heavily populated area, the resulting tsunamis could be even more devastating. If you want more information about those consequences, I have a video linked at the end of this one, a previous release on this particular asteroid. But at the same time, the only agency, or again, the agency that is best suited to deal with this problem, if it turns out that this asteroid is on a collision course, just received one of the most significant cuts in its staff in recent history. According to an article written by Eric Berger, who by the way is one of the preeminent journalists in space flight these days, at least in the United States, NASA was informed that they were going to lose approximately 1,800 of their workforce of 18,000 civil servants. According to sources, about 750 employees at NASA accepted the so-called fork-in-the-road offer to take deferred resignation for the space agency later this year. In other words, take early retirement, they'll get some money, otherwise they might lose their job anyway. This may sound like a lot of people, but generally about a thousand people leave the agency every year anyway, so effectively many of these people might be just getting paid to leave the jobs they were already planning to exit from. However, they aren't hiring any new people to replace these folks, so that's still a significant impact and it gets even worse. The culling of probationary employees, the folks who are either new hires working on a probationary period or people who have been promoted into a new position also working on a probationary period, well, we're looking at about a thousand of those folks being cut immediately. However, the cuts may not start there. Two sources told Mr. Berger that they have been told to prepare for significant reductions of their forces at NASA's field centers in the coming months. The scope of these cuts has not been defined. It's possible that they may not even happen given that the White House must negotiate budgets for NASA and other agencies with the U.S. Congress, but this directive for further reductions in force cuts casts more uncertainty on an already demoralized workforce and signals that the Trump administration would like to make further cuts. Now, job losses are always terrible. This will be a dark and painful day at a space agency that brings too much light and joy to the world. Many of the probationary employees are just starting out their careers and were likely to be thrilled to land a job at NASA to explore the universe. I know I probably would have been. And then all of that youthful energy and hope was extinguished this week. Yes, NASA is losing some capability with these latest cuts. Many of these hires were likely being counted on to bring new energy into the space agency and become its future discoverers and leaders, and their jobs are being sacrificed for no clear purpose. Is it to increase funding for the military? I hope not. The military budget is way too huge as it is. Is it to pay for tax cuts for the rich? In my opinion, that is very likely to happen. Every tax cut that Trump implemented in the past applied to the rich as well as the average person. There is a lot of anger that the relatively thin budget line of NASA, less than one half of 1% of the federal budget, is being sliced for such purposes. By the way, Eric Berger, prior to this, was an almost unconditional supporter of Elon Musk in everything he did. He was probably Elon Musk's favorite journalist. And now that he's taken on this kind of position, I'm pretty sure he's lost that favor and all the exclusive access that he used to get. And I just wanted to say that to congratulate and express my appreciation to Eric Berger for maintaining his journalistic integrity and stating his opinion, regardless of what kind of impact that might have on his future career, and especially the money he makes. I can definitely Definitely respect that. 
Because as anybody who watches my channel knows, I tend to say what I think, regardless of what kind of feathers I might ruffle in the process. There's also frustration at the indiscriminate nature of the cuts. The Trump White House and the Department of Government Efficiency, spearheaded by Elon Musk, have taken a meat cleaver approach by firing a lot of people at the same time, and probably not the right people through a messy and painful process. This is not dissimilar to job cuts during corporate mergers or bankruptcies. It's the fastest possible way to make cuts, but there's no empathy and it's a brutal process and it's going to have an especially significant impact at an agency like NASA, where job satisfaction levels prior to this were very high, where there is a strong team environment and the need for precision, the need for a mistake free environment where distractions are kept to a minimum and where morale is high is an absolute essential. Future Angry here, it turns out that these probationary employees are not going to be fired, at least not yet. By late in the afternoon yesterday, several field center directors received confirmation from the White House that their probationary employees, of which there are more than a thousand across the agency's headquarters and 10 field centers, would not be terminated. Strange 11th hour reprieve, but there you go. Apparently, all of these field center directors had issued a request for exceptions to be made or exemptions rather for all of their probationary employees, which comprise about 6% of NASA's workforce. So not all of the layoffs are covered here, but still a substantial percentage of them. And apparently the Trump administration, at least for the moment anyway, has given them that exemption. We're not sure why these changes were made, by the way. And NASA spokesperson in Washington, D.C. offered no comment on the updated guidance. Two sources indicated that it was plausible that private astronaut Jared Isaacman, whom President Trump had nominated to lead the space agency, asked for the cuts to be put on hold. Although this could not be confirmed, it seems reasonable that Isaacman would want to retain some control over where cuts to the agency are made. Firing all probationary employees, which is the most expedient way to reduce the size of government is a blunt instrument. It whacks new hires that the agency may have recruited for key positions, as well as high performers who earned promotions. The reprieve in these terminations does not necessarily signal that NASA will escape significant budget or employment cuts in the coming months, but it's still good news for now. The administration could still seek to terminate these probationary employees, and also Eric Berger reports that directors of the agency's field Field centers have been told to prepare options for a significant reduction in force in coming months. The scope of these cuts has not been defined, and it's likely that it would need to be negotiated with Congress, but honestly, I don't know. Given how things that have been going with the government at the moment, these cuts are happening whether Congress has anything to say about it or not. So I will keep you up to date on all of these developments and also any changes that might happen with this asteroid. Keep in mind that we probably won't know with 100% certainty as to whether or not this asteroid will collide with Earth until it makes its next close approach in 2029. Although we'll definitely have a better idea by then, there probably won't be a definite verdict before then unless ESA's efforts with the James Webb Space Telescope turns up some more information, better information than we have right now. In the meantime, NASA definitely knows how to stop this thing. They've done it before with their DART asteroid redirection test. They can do it again, but we need to start preparing a mission now just in case. If not for this asteroid, then perhaps for Apophis, which has not one but two impact possibilities in the next 10 years, or for another asteroid that we have yet to detect. Thanks again for watching. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. And also, please consider supporting this channel on Patreon. I'm going to be announcing a brand new contest tonight with some 
exclusive merchandise for the winners of the next contest I have coming up. One for a random Patreon supporter and one for a random Super Chat supporter. Some really cool new merchandise. Can't wait to unveil this to you. So stay tuned. And in the meantime, stay angry about space.